In the video today, I want to show you how to set up parental controls on the Moto G 5G. Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. Today, I want to walk you through how to set up parental controls on the Moto G 5G. I'm going to walk you through how to set it up on the main phone and how to link it to another device for monitoring. So, first thing you'll need to do, swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again and tap on the settings wheel in the bottom right corner. From here, you're going to swipe down until you get to the digital well-being and parental control section. Then you're going to swipe up and all the way at the bottom, it'll say parental control. Tap setup parental controls. It's telling you that the way it's going to monitor the phone is using the Google family link. And so let's pause really quickly. I'm going to jump to my other device. This is the phone that will be the parent phone. You'll need to go to the Play Store and download the Google Family Link app. You can also find this app for iPhones in the App Store. Just do a search for Google Family Link. This app will work with iPhones and Android in terms of the monitoring side, the parent side. So I already have it installed on this phone for uh, you watching the video and make sure you download this on the main device. We're gonna hit get started. And it's going to ask you, okay, who are you setting the phone up for? It's going to be for a child or teen. And then it's going to say, cool, we need to link it to this app, the Google Family Link app. Hit next. Now next, it's going to ask you to put in the Google account of the child. Now, if you don't have one, no problem. You simply need to go to uh, mail.google.com and select the option to create an account. And from there, you can set up a Google account for your child. If you already have one, no problem. This is when you'll want to get that information. Uh, you'll also have an option here where you can tap create account here and we can just make a fresh Gmail for them right now. Okay, so I've put in the uh, Gmail account. I'm gonna check this box here. It will ask you to just, um, uh, verify that you're a real person and not a robot. So right now it's giving the option for chimney. And so I need to find all the houses that have a chimney on it. And once that's done, I'm gonna hit the next button and hope that they haven't given me uh, too hard of an option. Okay, cool. So we got past that. We're gonna hit next. And now we're gonna enter, input the password for that Google account. So after we input the password, we'll need to um, Skip this option here. We're going to, um, you can turn on the uh, backup function and this will help to back up all the data in terms of contacts that are stored on the phone. We'll hit turn on there, hit I agree. Next, we're gonna swipe up, hit accept and cool. So now that we have a uh, account on the device, which is showing right here, I'm gonna tap on the account Okay, next we need to enter your email address. Basically the person who's gonna monitor the phone. Obviously if you're setting this up for someone else, make sure you use an email address that they have access to. Let's go ahead and put it in right now. Now while I'm entering the password on this phone here, I just wanna give a quick shout out to Mint Mobile. I just recently became a partner with their service. Um, they're the sponsor for our video today. I just switched my service over to their network and I've been saving a good amount of money on my phone bill. For those of you setting this phone up for a young person, if you wanna save money on that bill, you should consider Mint Mobile Service. They runs on the nation's largest 5G network. They have plans starting at just $15 a month, and it only takes about 15 minutes to switch over your service. So plain and simple, if you wanna save money on your bill, hit that link below in the description, or you can scan that barcode on the screen. All right, so now we've entered the email address and password, and now we're on our next screen here, which is just talking about the supervision of the phone, and it's basically telling you um, what a parent can see and do, and basically what you can see and do, so you'll be able to manage the account and settings, you'll be able to block or approve apps, you can control the location settings, so basically always know where their phone is, you can set uh, limited screen time, so you can tell them how much time they can use the phone in certain apps. You can set limits and controls on using Google Chrome, um, searching the web and YouTube, and you can also manage the entire Google Family account. Now in this section, it goes over what you can't see and what you can't do. 
so parents can't see remotely what is exactly on the screen. They more so have the ability to limit certain functionality and to, again, approve or block certain apps. Parents can't see their child's past search or browsing history. Parents can't see or reset their child's Google passwords. Parents can't read their child's email address or messages. Parents can't listen to their child's phone calls, can't change the screen lock password on the phone, and they can't erase their child's device or their data. So just so you have the right expectation of what you can and can't do, and you have, again, these specific options here. It says once family link supervision is set up, either a parent or child can stop the supervision at any time. If a child stops supervision without parental permission, parents are notified Supervised devices get locked for 24 hours and calls can still be made from a locked device. You can also set up supervision again with Family Link. So again, you do have some options here and if the child does try to unlink the account, then um, they can get locked out for up to 24 hours. So that's kind of a safeguard you have in the event they were to try to um, basically remove the Family Link app. The last thing is you'll need to confirm um, that um, you've reviewed uh, kind of the do's and don'ts of using Family Link, and then we'll need to enter the password of the child's email address. Okay, next you want to hit allow to finish the supervision setup, and while that's linking the accounts, now on the parent's phone, I'm going to open up the app here and just show you how to sign in and what it's going to look like from the parent side. So I'm going to hit continue. I've already signed into a Google account on this phone and it is make sure you sign up with the right Google account, the one that is linked um, here. So whatever parent uh, account, a parent Gmail you put here, you've got to sign in on that phone as well. I'm gonna hit allow for the app to be able to send me notifications so I can know what's happening with the other phone. So now everything is done. Now if I go back to digital well-being and parental control on the monitor device here, it's gonna show that parental controls is set up and right now there's no daily limits, there's no downtime set up and there's no apps that are blocked. Now, let's get into the parent side actually the things you can start setting up to limit the device. So first we did the initial, just the setup and the linking. Next we wanna go through and really customize what they're able to do and not do. So first of all, let's start with daily limit. So set the amount 